Hello, a wonderful person. This is Anton, and today I wanted to talk about a very old relationship that scientists, or I guess early astronomers, used to discover planets. Today we're talking about Titius Bode rule. Welcome to What the Math. So what exactly is this rule? Well, back in early 18th century, the astronomers defined uh, the pattern of planetary location using this really, really cool um, mathematical rule that they discovered completely by accident. Let me just show you how it works. Imagine you're trying to find a planet somewhere in our solar system, and you know it's um, actual location in comparison to other planets, but you just don't know how far away it is from the Sun. Two of the early astronomers, and here both of them are named Johann, but one of them is Johann Titius and one of them is Johann Bode, um, found this really interesting rule that can actually be applied to most of the planets in our solar system. And so today we're also are going to try to find out if we can use this rule to find planet 9. This early rule um, worked like this. Let's say you take uh, Mercury. Let's actually take the chart here. And uh, you define Mercury as the first planet with a position of zero. You then take Venus and because it's the second planet, you give it number uh, three. So basically you uh, add three to zero then every other planet is going to get the new position of a previous planet multiplied by two. So if this is zero, this is three, this will be six, this will be 12. Um, now, how do you actually find the distance from the sun? If you take this position and you add number four to it and then divide everything by 10, you will actually surprisingly get the value in astronomical units. So let's start with the first one. 0 plus 4 is 4, divide by 10 is 0.4. That's very, very close to the actual value of 0.39 AU. 3 plus 4 is 7, divide by 10 is 0.7, which is very close to the actual value of 0.72. Earth will give you an exact value of 1, and Mars, which would be 12 plus 4, which is 16, divided by 10, 1.6. The actual value is about 1.52 with about 4% error. Now, this is unusually accurate. This, this rule seems to apply to most of the inner planets. Um, the next object would be, uh, if this was 12, would be 24. 24 plus 4 will give you 28, divided by 10 is 2.8. And this is actually a distance uh, where of series. And this is exactly how they found Ceres. Uh, back in the days, uh, they were absolutely certain that there was another planet that was missing from this location right here. They started looking for it and they discovered uh, Ceres first, but then they started looking more and discovered other objects. Uh, they discovered Vesta, they discovered uh, Pallas, they discovered a lot of other asteroids in the asteroid belt. Um, the early speculation was that there used to be a planet called Phaeton that was basically destroyed by something and it created these objects. But today we know that it's most likely uh, the other way around. The planet was actually never born because right next to it was Jupiter and Jupiter basically prevented the planet from being formed. Now, does Jupiter actually meet this uh, rule or expectation? So if this was 24, this will be 48. 48 plus 4 is 52. 52 divided by 10 is 5.2. And just so you know it, 5.2 is the exact distance of Jupiter from the Sun. That's really weird. This is so eerie, right? All right, let's keep going. Um, what's next? 96. 96 plus 4 is 100. 100 by 10 is 10. The actual distance of Saturn from the Sun is 9.55. That's about 4% error. So surprisingly, up to here, the TTS board rule is absolutely accurate, but no, nothing is perfect. Uh, even though Uranus does meet the actual expectation with about 2% error, Neptune actually doesn't. When Neptune was discovered, this is the first uh, time that the rule was sort of put into question. 
the predicted value for the position of the next planet after Uranus would be 38.8 astronomical units. That's basically where Pluto is. In other words, uh, according to this rule, the next planet should actually be Pluto. But today we know that Neptune is uh, in the position of about um, 30 astronomical units, and that's about 22% difference from the predicted value. Uh, so unfortunately, Titu's bold rule seems to apply to inner planets, but not the outer planets. But let's for a second assume that maybe it does apply to all of the planets, it just, they either moved or maybe they were never formed. So if the next location for a planet, I guess we'll just create a randomly generated planet here, um, would be 38 AU. So where would the next planet be? Right after this, which I guess is where Pluto is, you'd expect to find another object at 77 AU. Now at this distance, we haven't really discovered anything. The closest objects to 77 AU are, um, where are they? It's Aries, which is right there, and uh, 2007 OR10. They are about 12 to 14 percent away from this location where Titius Bohr rule predicts the next planet. After this, the next position is at 154 AU, which is right here, and we haven't found anything in this location. So if Titius Boat rule is in any way accurate, you, or I guess we, would expect to find another object somewhere here. After this, it's 307 AU. So we're going to place another random exoplanet at 307 AU from here. And once again, nothing here. Although there is an object known as 2010 GB174 that's about um, 50 AU away from here, but still not too precise. And the last object we're going to place is going to be planet 9 and the predicted um, value here is about 614 AU. Now if you read the papers on a uh, planet 9 you'll discover that we assume that this planet is somewhere in this region actually which is very very strange. It's very strange that um, Titius Bode rule seems to predict a relatively accurate location for where we think planet 9 might be. Well, not relatively accurate, it's about 8% um, error here, but still. And if one day we discover Planet 9 and it just so happens that it's at exactly 614 AU, it would actually mean that somehow Titius Bode rule does seem to work. Now, what happens if it does work? Well, if Titius ru uh, rule, or I guess Bode rule, is actually a law, if it actually is something that is accurate, but for some reason is not super precise, we can use this uh, rule to apply it to other exoplanets in other star systems. In other words, we can actually go to a system like, for example, TRAPPIST-1, and using this uh, rule, or I guess a deviation of this rule, find other planets that we haven't discovered here yet. If this rule or this law is real, if it actually works for most of the planets, or at least inner planets, we can definitely rewrite it for other star systems. This would allow us to find exoplanets much easier, and this would definitely allow us to discover new worlds, with potentially some of them being habitable. For now though, or at least un until we find more patterns in systems like TRAPPIST-1, we can only assume that it's either a very, very unusual coincidence, or maybe just maybe only works for the inner solar system. In other words, only for the planets right until Uranus, nothing beyond the Uranus. If it does work only for inner planets, we still don't really understand why. It could be because of some sort of an unusual orbital resonance that's created here, or some sort of an unusual power law or a mathematical law that we haven't really been able to explain just yet. Anyway, we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos, and we'll also discuss some of the patterns you can find in moons of planets like Jupiter and Saturn. For now though, that's all I wanted to talk about, and thank you for watching. Do subscribe, and potentially click on this bell button right next to the subscribe button so you can get notified about future videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.